Hey folks, this is Matt once again with another video that was actually meant for October, but had too many films, not enough time. It was my thoughts on Pandorum. Now, Pandorum is a 2009 sci-fi horror film that was directed by a guy named Christian Albert. I'm not sure what else the guy has done, if anything. Now, it's produced by the guys who made the Resident Evil movies, Paul W.S. Anderson, who, as I call it, Paul Wildstallion wow, Anderson and Jeremy Bolt, but thankfully they didn't direct it. Now Pandorum stars Ben Foster, who I like as an actor. I think he's an underrated actor. And you also have Dennis Quaid. It's always nice to see Dennis Quaid in there. There's many films of his I enjoy. Frequency, Inner Space, Vantage Point, Enemy Mine, and so forth. And it's always nice to see Dennis Quaid tip his toes into the sci-fi realm. He's done it quite a few times. And the story is those two guys, they wake up and they're on a spaceship. And you find out that the ship was on a mission to another planet that was similar to Earth to maybe help colonize it and who knows maybe move more people there in the future but these two wake up Ben Foster is an engineer and he gets with Dennis Quay and they talk on what to do next because the ship seems all fucked up malfunctioning not moving at all so Ben Foster has to travel to the reactor during that, he meets a couple people, but then he also finds out that there are these mutants, these creatures on the ship. And then later on in the film, you find out what they are and how they came to be. And meanwhile, Dennis Quaid finds someone in the room he's at, and throughout the film, he's having conversations with this guy, picking his head, picking his brain on what happened in the past. Now, the film, it was funny watching it again, because, in a way, this has a lot of similarities to a game I played and enjoyed called Dead Space. Uh, number one, yeah, it takes place on a spaceship that's fucking up, just like the first Dead Space game. Uh, ben Foster's looking for a loved one, just like Isaac Clarke was looking for his girlfriend Nicole in the first Dead Space. but then doesn't find her again like in Dead Space both of the characters are engineers Ben Foster even has this one gun that is like a force gun which you get in Dead Space it's not the same design but you know it shoots and people get pushed back and in Dead Space there is a gun called a force gun that you can do that get the contact beam get the plasma cutter Line gun was my favorite. But and then like the people, they're they were people of the crew, but they're mutated and they're, you know, just like in Dead Space they mutated, granted not the same design. Although there's one child creature that's like albino that I swear looks like the kid creatures, those annoying little fuckers you fight in Dead Space too. And if my friend Michael Keen Phantasm is watching, you know which ones I'm talking about. The ones that climb on you and try to take your fucking head off in Dead Space 2. And again, this is like a small kid creature that looks very similar to that. And even its screams are similar to that. And there's a reason why a lot of people do like fan trailers for a Dead Space movie. This movie is used a lot of the times. Also, in the dementia aspect, in Dead Space, there's this dementia that can overtake you, make you go crazy. Here, the dementia is known as Pandorum, when you've been out in space too long, and there's a certain event that really shapes you to the core and can affect your mind. I'm like, damn, even as the dementia aspect, so. It's kind of interesting, if you play Dead Space and you watch this, you see certain similarities to it. Now, the film is not an action film at all. 
I think that's one of the drawbacks of the film. I, I think it would have helped if it had uh, quite a few more action set pieces. Like Ben Foster doesn't use that gun enough to my liking. Uh, he uses I a handful of times, but I would like him to use that a lot more. I mean, you have it there, why not use it a lot? So that's one drawback. But what makes the film work, and you know, it, it flopped big time when it came out. I think the Matrix wanted to do a prequel and a sequel, but that didn't come to be because it bombed so badly. Uh, but I thought the acting was pretty good. Uh, Kun Lee who starred in some direct -to video action films I didn't care for. He's a supporting character who doesn't speak any English. He actually did fine. He's one of the people Ben Foster finds. I forget the actress's name, but I thought she did fine. Ben Foster did a good job. Dennis Quaid I liked. There's this thought in the back of my head, I will admit, that I kind of wanted to see Dennis Quaid as the lead, going through the ship and having that gun and... But I did for the plot why you did an older actor for the other part, which, which I might get to if I go into spoilers. But there was that part of me was like, hmm, what if Dennis Quay was the lead? That would be pretty cool. But Ben Foster did a good job. I like the atmosphere of the ship. I thought it had some good visuals of the ship. Some claustrophobic scenes, like when he's going through a vent and he's stuck for a little bit. I thought I had a spooky atmosphere within the ship. <coughs> I thought the, the creature design was well done. Some nice effects, you know, makeup work. The Dennis Quaid stuff, there's a twist. I think there's people that can figure out the twist pretty early on. So that hurts the film. Because I wouldn't say I love Pandorum. I would say I like Pandorum. I did. I do think there are some faults with it. But I think if you're a fan of sci-fi horror and you've never seen it, it's at least worth a look. But you can tell they put a little bit of money onto the screen. I did. They had some good visuals. I thought the director did a more than capable job on the flick. Uh, the score fit the film fine. Like I said, the actors did their jobs well. And the story was a bit intriguing. And uh, to go a little bit more into spoilers with the story, what you come to find out is a guy had woken up as part of this... Like, they take shifts as to who's going to be awake and pilot all these people to this Earth-like planet. And then this one group, they got a message that Earth was gone. And it was, you know, that's a hell of a blow. And so one of them was affected with Pandora. Uh, killed the others, decided to make himself team, would release people and go, hey, you guys fend for yourselves. Just there's no one here, there's no law and order. And so you realize it's been decades and decades and decades since then and so that's why now these people have mutated because it's been stuck on the ship throughout the hundreds of years and that's why the more uh, albino uh, also there was this enzyme type of thing that was supposed to help them on the colonization of the other planet but then that got affected too I don't know, it might not seem much to other people, but hearing a little bit about the story, I thought it was a, little, a bit intriguing to me. I also like the little twist at the end where they're like, well, the ship isn't, doesn't seem like it's moving, what's going on? And they realize they've actually landed since the beginning of the movie, they've, they've been on that planet. They were just in the water. And the ocean of it. So I don't know, like that little bits like that, I'm like, oh well that's that's fucked up what you think about. It. They've been here the whole time. And I think they've been there they might have been there for like a hundred 
50, 100 years as well. But yeah, the, the movie, some people may think, ah, oh, you know, it's not a lot of action in it, which I, I, I agree with. Doesn't seem like too much happens. But I thought for what it was trying to do, it did it fairly well. At least to the point that it doesn't deserve to be lumped in lists where it's one of the worst sci-fi films of all time. I'm like, really? You think this is one of the worst sci-fi films of all time? I'll take this over the new Predator movie. Um, there's a hundred movies I'd rather take this over. Pick a year. But... I thought it did his jobs well. I think if you're a fan of Dead Space, it's worth a look. Just a huh, couple of those similarities. That's kind of fun factor to it. I don't know if this came out before Dead Space the video game, or if it came out at the same time. I'm not sure the what all happened with it, but you know, he's kind of as of right now the closest you get to a Dead Space movie in a weird way. But again, just wanted to give some thoughts on it. I think it's worth a look if you've never seen it. And again, Ben Foster, Dennis Quaid, they do a good job in their roles. And like I said, good set design. I like the look of the ship. I like the atmosphere, the spookiness they create within the ship. Very dark. Uh, it's not a ripoff of Alien or anything of that nature. At least I didn't think so. And of all... And yeah, if you're a fan of sci-fi horror, I think it's worth at least one look. But thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.